Hey everyone, Derek here, and what you're about to listen to is one of the topics from our weekly Real Talk podcast, where we discuss all kinds of gaming-related subjects. If you want to listen to the entire podcast, just click on the iTunes or SoundCloud links in the description below. And if you back us on Patreon, you can listen to our podcast three days early every Friday, as well as suggest possible podcast topics. So let's get right to it. What are your thoughts on Zelda Go, an augmented reality app where you earn rupees breaking into your neighbor's house and smashing their dish set, <laughs> their dish sets? Love the podcast, guys. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is because someone else had a similar topic where he asks, "What other game ideas do you have for a sort of Pokemon Go-like game?" For me, it would be a Chow Garden where you have to find. Oh, this is from Bradley Crowling, by the way. Uh, his idea is you would have a Chow Garden uh, where you have to find different types of Chow, and instead of in Pokemon where you throw them away, you actually get to act- you actually actively save them and raise them. Um, so I thought this was interesting, but it's something I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about to some degree, uh, because for one, I was talking to my friend literally about that Zelda idea, where the Poke Stops would be villager houses, and you go in, you just smash all their pots, <laughs> nice. and, you get, and you get rupees. Um, and then there, and instead of gyms, you'd have like dungeons, uh, where you go in and do dungeon-like things. I, I think that's where it breaks down a little bit where it's easy to come up with a superficial concept. It's like, okay, what do you do at these locations? Whereas Pokemon lends itself pretty well with the gems where you take them over. So another idea I had, uh, to, you know, thinking of things that lend, that lend themselves well to social interaction, you guys, are, you guys are going to be like, how did I not think about this? <laughs> Splatoon. Freaking Splatoon. You choose a color team, you go around, you paint the city, literally, by going to the locations and taking them over. And the more paint you have like, in the district, the more your team is winning. Oh god, you just introduced like gang warfare. Yeah, I, I, I honestly feel like that would actually like spell that would be the initial downfall of society. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, I, okay, I, I understand taking over spots in order to get to your inking, but what would you do? Because it's not just gyms for in, for Pokemon Go. What would you do like as far as like getting to those gyms and building up your let's say ink? I mean, you yeah, just, that's, you to, I guess you, you could. I mean, places? you could base it around. You could combine it with a single player campaign, maybe, where there are uh, the octolings you have to take on, different types of octolings you have to take on. I mean, you, you don't, it doesn't have the same collectability aspect of Pokemon, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe in order to build your ink, you have to fight octolings, and they can then use that ink to dis, to distribute around the city. So you so it builds that feedback mechanic into it, where you're rewarded for doing one thing, you know, and you can use that elsewhere. Um, that's how you paint the city, and you get more points for maybe having. Uh, like you're rewarded in some way for having your team control districts, okay. right? Yeah, I think there's a good idea in there. I, I yeah, can definitely be... see where it would work. Yeah, absolutely. And just like the turf warfare would be insane. Yeah, especially <laughs> with like how freaking big Splatoon is right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like it might be able to achieve a success, if not, you know, not quite the same level of Pokemon Go, but probably it has probably some of the most promise of any of Nintendo's other IPs. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I, I have two ideas, a, a good one and a bad one. Um, the, the, the bad one is oh, well, Mario Kart. Why did I mention the bad one? Oh, just wait. The bad one <laughs> is Mario Kart Go, where you just hold your phone in front of you while you're driving to see oh all my the, God. the turtle oh shells God. And, and banana peels, and you have to, you know, you know, swerve around them, and it's great. Great idea, right? Oh, my God. What's wrong totally with you? Perfect. <laughs> no, but my actual idea... Um, and this is funny because I'm not I'm not even a fan of the series really, but I feel like there could be what is, what is a case these ideas for Pikmin Go. Oh, because oh. you could actually like like imagine searching for Pikmin in like grassy areas or in a park where you actually have to find Pikmin and quote unquote pluck them out of the ground, and then there are these stops or whatever where you have to use your Pikmin. You have to contribute your Pikmin army against a much bigger enemy to take them down with other people. So like say there's an enemy that requires like a million red Pikmin to take down. And you have to contribute your army, and people work together to overcome these obstacles. That's and, actually and, really cool. Yeah, not yeah. bad, right? Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, like you I, have I some like things the, similar to Poke Stops, where you like just you get different items that can help build up your Pikmin and grow them out, and so you have more at your disposal. Yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Something like that, where you you know, let's say I don't know what what the rewards would be or what the incentive would be, but. You know, if if there's a a stop that you need like five thousand yellow Pikmin and ten thousand red and three thousand blue for that enemy to successfully be defeated, then people have to work together toward that end. And you only oh. be able to get blue Pikmin near the water. You can only get red Pikmin in maybe I don't know, like beach-like areas. I don't know things like that. 
You know, it'd be cool like... if if you're collecting like parts and you can make different things that augment your ability, and you that's what you're collecting. That's what you're working towards. Different uh, gadgets and stuff that you're putting together. Oh yeah. But you just need to gather material thanks to the Pikmin. Right. Oh man, I kind of uh, man, this would be tough to balance. What if the ultimate goal is to build spaceships using these parts to get your pick to get the Pikmin off the planet back to their home planet? So you're rewarded for getting the Pikmin back home. But you need to use those Pikmin, of course, to build up, you know, to find more Pikmin and to destroy these enemies on Earth. Hmm. Okay. There's mm. yeah. There's an interesting part of that too. Or there's an like I like the idea of sending them back home. What if it's kind of like that game Nobi Nobi Boy where you know, all the players around the world, or at least around the country, are contributing to this thing that everyone can see. You know, like where the the pigment planet's getting more and more, you know, populated or bigger or something, where people right. can follow that online somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. I think something of that idea could work. I, I think ultimately, I mean, Nobody Nobody Boy was a good concept, yeah. I think, but I think it's more interesting when there's like an overall level of competition. Sure, yeah. So, so maybe mm -hmm. something along those lines, but still with a competitive angle. Mm -hmm. But what what I think would be really cool with this idea is if instead of having it based around Pokestops, maybe have it be more, based more around like real-time social interaction, which I guess could also be inviting all kinds of issues as well. <laughs> but I mean, that's kind of like the idea of the Pikmin games where it was like a real-time version of, uh, of um, you know, RTS games. Or I get or a more like hands-on version of real of uh RTS games. I think it'd be cool if, like, you actually had to fight these uh, battles together in real time. So, like, let's say there's, like, a giant crab going through the city. A, a giant enemy crab, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> going through your city. And in order to take them down, like, I, I guess you could try, you could deal some damage by yourself individually. But if you really want to gang up on this guy, you have to all attack him at the same time. In order, I'm glad there's an ambulance <laughs> going about right now. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, you, you have to, like, work together. Like, you know, if, if, there's a bunch of people like chasing him through the city at the same time. I think that would be really cool. Well, I like, like the idea, damage. but I think Pokemon yeah. Go is kind of already touching on that because, like, with the Mewtwo thing, where they're all like taking on Mewtwo in Times Square. Well, if that's well, how that's, it ends well, up, the trailer it didn't right accurately right. show everything else. So. Right. So I mean, I agree that that's the exact idea. It's just that Pokemon Go is not doing that yet. So. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, I think Pikmin wins because my idea <laughs> <laughs> was. What about a like um, a uh, Kirby AR game? And you're such a foodie, Ash. Like you go to different restaurants and you like I don't know, do something with Kirby where he eats the food and you get different powers and abilities and just like sort of raise your Kirby up by I, what you feed. By that would be really cool. cool. I actually kind of like that idea. It actually would make people taking all those pictures of their food so meaningful. Exactly. Yeah. You take a picture of a food, and Kirby gets to eat it, and he judges it. So that would actually be that. That actually would be really cool. Like maybe he it could he could look at the color of the food or something, and have mm -hmm. it and have that dictate like what happens next. Like maybe he inherits a power from it or something. I, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I can just I can see that being used for evil very quickly. Like or not even used for evil, but used irresponsibly. Like people eating bigger and bigger things, or or worse and worse things, just to succeed in the app. And getting sick, mm -hmm. and you know, I could see that happening. Oh, that's wow! That you, man, you took that to a dark place. I mean, I just oh, you're yeah. right. I'm sorry, but I just I I when we're talking about something on a on a social society level like this, I always have to think about how people could possibly ruin it because there will <laughs> always be people out there who will do their best to do that. Yeah, I mean, but if, with that, to Pokemon Go would have never happened in the first place. That's very true. That's, yeah, I yeah. mean, but, you know, here, here today we've got two people who fell off a cliff playing Pokemon Go, so there will always oh, be people out there. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, yeah I didn't hear two about people that in either. San Diego fell off a cliff trying to catch a Pokemon. They're okay, but they fell like 75 feet down to the beach. How the hell are they okay? <laughs> I don't know, That's but they're okay. Drop, yeah, they, they laid it on a Snorlax. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so, man. But uh, yeah, I don't know how they're okay. But you know, there there will always be those people who take a good idea and use it irresponsibly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I don't I don't know. I, I think it'd be kind of cool to have a little Kirby next to you. And I think I mean, so too, because people like you've seen those pictures online of people taking like their Kirby's from like. Um, Mass attack and have them do different things, or yeah. Kirby next to something, eating it, showing them like kind of eating it, and then showing what he becomes. Uh, you know, it's just fun to pose Kirby and to do that with like food and just find some way to work it into some sort of AR game. I think would be really fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. And that's it for that topic. But there's more where that came from, so make sure to check out our full Real Talk podcast on either SoundCloud or iTunes by using the links in the description. Until next time.
Bye.